What's happening, everybody? John Joseph uh, from Chroma Hanks, and uh, you're watching Distribution TV. Bow. I mean, uh, not just from New York, but there's bands from all over the place. Uh, I love Turnstile. And, you know, bands that are doing original stuff. I mean, the new Manball record, amazing. You know, and then you got the old Star Wars, Sick of It All, Agnostic Front, H2O. You know, every, everybody's been around. There's some good bands coming out, too. I mean, you know, I've been going to concerts since 77 punk concerts in New York City and everything, so it's like, to watch punk and then become, you know, then you had the whole DC scene, which I was part of, the SOA, Minor Threat, all that stuff, and then the Black Flag, you know. I said this the other day, it's like a tree, and the roots are in the ground, and the branches spread out, a lot of it, the roots are still in punk, and then it goes on from there. So I love when I hear something really unique and new, I really, that's what I tend to gravitate toward, uh, people doing something a little different. Uh, I mean, you know, people asked me the other day, they were like, did you ever think when you did that record that it was going to become, you know, what it is? And you just do what you love. And even though to this day I've never received one penny from that record, it's a record I'm proud of. I was proud to contribute to writing a majority of the lyrics on the album and, you know, performing the songs over 30, 30 something years now live. So, you know, we recorded it. Nobody could take single credit for anything because people contributed. The ex members from Mackie to Paris and Harley and whatever, and myself. So, it's something that just went out to the universe and spoke a lot of truth, so. Uh, that's never gonna happen because uh, a lot of shit was done to me. You know, I wrote about it in my book, Evolution of a cro Magnon. The amount of things that was done in the past from the stealing, and turning me into the government that Harley did and everything else, and I forgave him in 2000, and I wiped the slate clean, and I said, okay, man, and then it was just, he wasn't, he said, the beef ain't over, I'm just here for the paycheck, fuck that dude behind my back, so there's no need to ever, I don't have any beef, any qualms, but there's no need to do it, our shows do fine. Kids on the scene said that he was starting trouble with basically came up and were like, you don't need that motherfucker. People will still support the Chrome Eggs and he starts shit everywhere he goes. I do this to have fun. I have a career outside of music. I'm a writer. I write for, I write books, television. I'm involved with films. So I don't do this. This is my passion since I was a little kid. So I respect the hell out of music and I want to enjoy myself doing it. That's why who's in the band now? is in the band, it's family. And it's Craig, it's Mackie, AJ, and myself. Yeah. So yeah, I just finished this book on uh, mindset. It's become a big thing. And it's it can help anybody to achieve their goals, to, to beat addiction or abuse from a childhood, whatever the hell issues you might be dealing with, it's teaching you how to train your mind as a tool to get you to where you want to go, to be a better musician, to be a better athlete, to be a better father, to be a, a, a better wife, whatever. So it's, it's a book, uh, you know, PMA comes from the first time I heard it was the Bad Brains from HR, but that was taken from uh, Napoleon Hill and his teachings on PMA. And that's where HR got it from. So I went back and I researched all of that, read his books, 
and then interviewed and talked to some of my friends who are elite athletes or my friends in the Navy SEALs, whatever it is, these guys that do amazing things, what was it that helped them to overcome shit that nobody can do? Less than 1% of society, whether it's Iron Man, these intense races, martial arts, whatever. And everything, the common denominator, was your mental strength got me through. When the physical was gonna give out, the mental strength kicked in, and that's what the book's about. So that's coming out this summer. It's going to the printer uh, any day now, so I'm very excited. And uh, Rich Roll wrote the forward. Rich Roll's a famous author, podcaster in the United States. The Rich Roll podcast is one of the biggest podcasts on health and fitness and wellness. He has like top people on it. And uh, he has a book out, Finding Ultra, and a bunch of vegan cookbooks. So he wrote the forward for me. So yeah, it'll be out soon. It's a different animal. Training for Ironman. I mean, I've, I've been on tour. The last two full Ironmans I did, uh, I was training out on the road as I'm touring with Pro Mags or the other band Blood Clot, whatever I was doing. So it's a discipline because when everybody else wants to stay out late and go hang out with people, I got to be like, I got to get up at 6.30 in the morning and go swim two miles in the pool or I got to run 15 miles or I got to hit the weight room or I got to get on a spin bike somewhere. So it's all about the discipline and music takes discipline. To do this as long, people that live the sex, drugs, and rock and roll bullshit, they're not doing what I'm doing at this point in my music career and still able to do at 56 years old, be on tour, train for Iron Man, and the rest of it. So it teaches you to be very disciplined, and it takes me to another place spiritually. Running for me, I get on a spiritual high, cycling. The training is, you know, people said to me, Oh, do you do Cro-Mags to keep in shape for Iron Man? I said, no. I do Iron Man to keep in shape for Cro-Mags because I got to keep up with Mackie Jason behind the drums. <laughs> we might do some shows next year. Everybody's involved in different projects. You know, we'll see what happens. And uh, I think, like, the music, the record did really well in the States. We toured with Negative Approach. The shows were like sold out. Uh, and we never been to Europe with it, so maybe next year we'll come over and, and play some shows, some club shows, you know. Yes. So my tour, actually, uh, it's, it's crime, music, and art. It's been on NBC TV. All the newspapers, The Times, Time Out, The Today Show in New York, and they said it's one of the most informative tours. Shit you'll never hear anywhere else because a lot of it is like, I've been on the streets, you know, in the 70s and doing all crazy shit, trafficking drugs and knew all the drug dealers and wars with the drug dealers and, and then the music and the art and the culture and everything that's happened. So yeah, I do those when I'm in town, when I can. Fox 5 News is doing a, a new special July 5th at 10.30 New York time. And it's with Steve Lacey. And it's called When New York Rocked. So it's all about the L'Amour scene, the punk scene from the 70s and 80s. And uh, it's going to be a good one. But the primary part of the whole special is he came and took the walking tour. And he was like, I just learned shit I never knew. Like, this is what happened when the Clash played Bonds and, you know, in 81 and there was riots and the fire department came and Patti Smith playing CBGB's theater at 66 Second Avenue, which used to be the Anderson Theater, which Grateful Dead did a benefit concert in 69 for the Hells Angels there. There's so many good, I've researched it for years and a lot of it I knew personally, so.
I mean, it's not religion. Religion is dogma. I don't subscribe to religion. My thing is spirituality. So I meditate every day. I chant. I do my devotions. I maintain a strict plant-based vegan diet. And it's service. I always help other people. I feed the homeless in New York and have been doing it since 1982. Vegan meals. I fed KRS-One, the rapper, when he lived in the men's shelter. So I've been doing that, and it's about service and helping other people. And people write me all the time, I'm going through all this stuff, I'm depressed, suicidal, I have addiction, I have this, I have that, how do I do this? So part of that whole process is service and placing yourself to say, hey man, you know, if you need me, I'm there. So the name Das, Jayananda Das, Das means servant. You should always be trying to, that's the problem. Everybody wants, especially in music, everyone wants to be worshipped like they're fucking gods or something. Fuck all that shit. Stay humble and help other people. That's my philosophy. And that's what I do in New York, whether it's music, triathlon, feeding the homeless, helping people get off drugs. So that's, my religion is, if you want to call it religion, is the service, service of others, to help people. And that's what I do. That's what I was taught by my spiritual teacher, Prabhupada. He came, he fed everyone, he slept on the floor. Now you see gurus and yoga societies, fucking millions of dollars driving Rolls Royce, banging all the fucking chicks in the, in the club. That's bullshit, that's hypocrisy. You know, I don't subscribe to that. Even in Hare Krishna, the ones who took over the movement after Prabhupada did the most abominable shit. They raped children, they murdered people. I'm not down with those people. I have nothing to do with that organized religion. I do my thing, and when someone says, yo, what's this about? I give them Prabhupada's book. I say, read Bhagavad Gita, man. It'll fucking change your life. That's, that's what it's all about. You know, a lot of musicians come to me and they're like, you know, what do, what do I got to do? Like, I, you know, because I'm playing music 37 years now. I started in 81. cro started, and then that broke up in 81, and then I went on tour with Bad Brains, and the roadies formed a band called Blood Clot. So I stay with doing music all this time, and I'm going to tell you how. It's having passion and belief in what you're doing. And don't sit there. In this world today, everybody wants instant results. And I just said that I did the Everlast uh, Boxing Podcast. I said, everybody wants insta-fame, instant results, instant mashed potatoes, microwave society. If you do music because you love music, whether the success comes or not, you will never quit. And that's the last thing I say in the evolution of a Cro-Magnon is develop the mindset and attitude of the warrior's code. And what is the warrior's code? Never give up. And that's what it's all about. You need to love music. I was in a foster home being abused for seven years as a child. And the only salvation I had was music. Music meant I used to dream about being a musician at seven and eight years old. I didn't even know what it was. I wanted to get in a van and travel and play music. I didn't know. This is 1970. I didn't know about touring. I didn't know shit. But I wanted to do music. And I said that. I tweeted that out the other day. I was like, you know, don't just keep a dream a dream. Take action and go for it. And then take action and work hard every single day. If you work hard at your craft, you're going to get good at it. I watch actors and writers and, and people in music, the dedication that they have. All these bands that are big right now, they did work, man. And shit, Chromax too. We slept in squats, we slept on people's floors, we had fucking vans, plumbing vans that we toured the country, opening up for Motorhead at arenas. We fucking did it every day. We had to steal food and we're playing arenas because our manager was ripping us off. Did we quit? Fuck no. We don't quit, so don't quit. And if you have passion, what I always say is not just passion, but you're obsessed. You have a beautiful obsession, and I write about this in my new book. Obsession, 
people always try to say that that's a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. If you have a beautiful obsession with music or creating some art, and tell me the world doesn't need art with all the fake shit that's out there. We need good film, we need good books, we need good plays, we need good music. So have an obsession and don't give up. The results may not come in the beginning. I would rather have a career that I have now than the bands that came out in the 80s. And you know what? Where the fuck are they now? I'm still doing it because I did it for the right reasons. And I didn't make money and I didn't have shit. But I kept with music because music's been everything to me since I was a little kid. So I didn't give up. When I gave up music, that's when the addiction came for two years. In uh, 87 to 89, I was almost murdered five times. Shot AR-15s and fucking shot at and robbed drug dealers. And all the insanity came when I gave up on my music. So that's what I tell everybody. Big shout out to Vinnie Paul. He passed. Those brothers, they were something else, man. They were good dudes. I met him and Phil and the whole thing when they were doing Pantera and really righteous dude. God bless him and his family. That's the last thing I'll say.